They say you never truly know a person until you live with them. On today's case, Ms. Buford says she had a crush on her husband for 17 long years before the stars finally aligned and brought the two of them together. Now she says things have gotten so bad, she's afraid they won't even make it to their one-year wedding anniversary. Mrs. Buford says that instead of finding a caring partner, she's married to a man who won't communicate with her about money, his feelings, or their relationship, and she feels completely alone. Mr. Buford says that his wife's feelings about their relationship have left him completely baffled, especially since he says his life revolves around working hard to provide for Mrs. Buford and keeping her comfortable. Hmm, let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Buford versus Buford. Thank you very much. Mrs. Buford, you have only been married for 10 months, but you fear you've made the biggest mistake of your life by marrying your husband. You say Mr. Buford's irritable and combative behavior has you walking on eggshells in your own house and thinking divorce may be your only option. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Buford, you say that you work 12-hour shifts to provide for your family, and all you do is show your wife that you love her. You are here in court today hoping to find a resolution so you can make it to your first day anniversary. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, this is a brand-new newlywed couple. Even though you all have known each other for 17 years, you were together for four years prior to getting married, and you've only been married for a year. Both of you have children from previous relationships, but you're raising a minor child together. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay, so we don't want to completely disrupt this young lady's life unless you absolutely have to, so that means we need to figure out why we're in court today. You tell me, Mrs. Buford. Well, Your Honor, it's like we, we can't communicate. We can't have a conversation about bills, relation, our relationship, um, anything serious. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about it. He gets defensive. There's an argument. I just, now I just don't say anything anymore because I don't want to argue. I don't want a divorce, but I, I really want us to find the solution to fix it so that we can stay together. I understand completely. Mr. Buford, uh, do you agree with Mrs. Buford that the communication has just not been working since you all got married? I do, uh, Your Honor. For some reason, we seem to have a problem with communication. Well, let's try to dig into it a little bit deeper. Mrs. Buford, I know you and Mr. B Buford met through family. Take me through how you all found each other. I know you were both in a relationship. Yes, he was married, and I was in a relationship with my oldest daughter, um, dad. And okay. We knew at that time that both of us liked each other. Um, right. But, of course, he, him being married and me involved, then um, I moved away, and when mm -hmm. I came back, we kind of dated for maybe a month or so. A little quick hookup. Yeah, it was, it was quick. I moved away again. We'd seen each other again, and we were both single. Uh-oh. So... Stars finally aligning. Yes, ma'am. But I understand you were pregnant then. I was. I was pregnant. But you had broken up with the baby's father. Yes, ma'am. Uh, once I found out I was pregnant, he told me he didn't want me. So I, I left. I moved on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you said to the left, baby. Exactly. Yeah. And Mr. Buford, he stepped in, you know. And stepped up. He did. He told me everything was okay. Don't worry about him. I'll take care of you and the baby. Look at you, Mr. Buford. You better go on and step into that space. Got you a beautiful family and everything. You all literally had to wait till the stars were aligned in order to be together. Yes. yes. So I'm going to tell you right now, we're not just going to toss this just for the heck of it because we're having a miscommunication. So can we all three agree we are now trying to be solution-oriented here, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Now, I'd like to know know what has changed because you clearly lived together at some point before you actually tied the knot. Yes, ma'am. How did you all talk to each other during that time, and how has it changed? Um, our communication was okay then. Um, it, it seems like, well, we had a, a house fire, and we had to leave our home. Um, we were living in a hotel for six months. Oh. And I think that's what changed everything. It was like we were both on the edge. That puts a lot of stress on, a, on a young marriage. It does. And, and this happened very early on in the marriage, right? It did. It actually happened one month before we actually got married. So you, you were living in a hotel when you got yes. married? Yes. We had a Zoom Justice of the Peace wedding in, in our hotel. OK, that's called somebody really loves each other and they want to be married. Mr. Buford, what has changed 
everything was good until the the house fire, you know, and it put a strain on me to where I had to work so much. And when I got the position in my job, that she ain't got to worry about working, you know. I, I don't mind taking care of her and the kid, you know. But when the house burned down, it put us in a whole different situation right. where I was paying $600 a week right. for us to live somewhere, and I needed help, you know, right. and I really felt like... $600 a week is $2,400 yes, a month. Ma'am. What and was I your rent before that? It was $700 a month. See, that's the difference. Okay. Now, you almost tripled... Exactly. ...your And it really hurt. Expenses. It really, you know, it stressed me out a, I can a lot, see that. you know, and I really thought she was going to help out, which, I mean, I, like I said, I told her she didn't have to work, but... The, the situation that we were in at home, we needed the money, you know? I can understand that. I'm going to say this to you, Miss Buford. Unless your last name is Bezos, pretty much everybody I know, they need a double income in a family, okay? Yeah, Talk to me about how this financial strain has manifested itself in your relationship. He's a totally different person. We can't talk. I think one of our biggest problems is we don't have any alone time. We are constantly... We live with my parents, and I'm home all day with our three-year-old daughter. We don't go on dates. We don't do anything, and it's just... Do, do your parents work outside of the home? Uh, my mom does. My dad doesn't work anymore, and honestly, that's why I don't work, because he was keeping my, our daughter. Well, talk to me about these financial problems, because Mr. Buford says you kind of nag him about the bills, yes. and that's a problem for him. Talk to I, me about I that. I nag him because... I don't want for us to be put in a position where, you know, we have to fight to get out of it again. I don't want any bills to be cut off, and I want to make sure that we stay on top of things so that things like that won't happen. I don't want to see a disconnect notice, and if you don't have the money or, you know, you're going to have it next week, tell me that. But I don't feel like it's nagging. I just feel like it's being responsible to take care of the bills before they're due. I'm concerned that all of this impacts on your intimacy and your romantic life. Yes, ma'am. There's hardly any foreplay. It's just, bam, come on, let's do this. Turn over, you know. I want to feel like he really wants me and not the sex. So do you all have a, a financial plan in place, Mr. Buford? Yes, ma'am. Like the mm-hmm. bills, like the car note and the rent, I know... They're, st- much... they're static. They're going to be the same every right, month, right? right? Right, exactly. And I know how much I, about how much I need to make in my, you know, on my, my, on my job, how many, how many hours I need to work. And I've been working extra just so we can have extra, you know, just so we can do some things that she want to do. Mm-hmm. But it still never works out because I will always end up running out of money before I get paid again. And, and you run, and you live in paycheck to paycheck yes, right ma'am. now. And I do not like that. And Miss Miss Buford, right now there are so many at home and virtual jobs. I've I've been looking. Okay. I have. Because I can hear in Mr. Buford's voice that there's pressure to make sure that he provides for his family. He's living with his in-laws, and I'm sure he'd like to get to a point where he doesn't have to live with his in-laws. And so, as a man, he's going to need some real backup at this time. And one of those backups is going to be, you're going to have to swallow a little of it. I I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes you're going to have to swallow it. So, one suggestion is, when you make your financial plan, write down when things are due. And make an agreement, Mr. Buford, when y'all can talk about it. Do you see what I'm saying? I had to learn how to do this because I got in a lot of financial problems myself because I was overspending thinking that credit cards was free money. Then you got to pay for it, right? Did you all do premarital counseling before you got married? We didn't, and I believe we should have. Now, you know good and well. (laughs) We we didn't. Two whole grown people coming together, you definitely need to figure out how you work your money and how you work your money. She may be one of these anal people that requires bills be paid a week and a half before they're supposed to be due. Yes, ma'am. You might be one of those people that get it in right under the midnight deadline so that you don't end up having to pay a late fee, but you can hold on to it as long as you can. Yes, ma'am. Neither way is wrong, but either way stresses the other person out. Right. Fair? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Why don't we get some specifics? Because I think Ms. Buford has some specific things that, if addressed, would make it easier. How do you get your money? I don't get money. Um, you know, I don't work, 
So my, any income that comes in the house comes from my husband, and I have to ask him for money. I feel like a child getting allowance, and I know sometimes he don't have money. Sometimes he does. Sometimes it, it could just be $10 to put in my pocket to make me feel better. You know, if I go out, I can buy a pop or do anything, you know, do something that I need to do, but I don't go anywhere because I don't have any money in my pocket. I'm concerned that all of this impacts on your intimacy and your romantic life. Yes, ma'am. Has it? It has, um, because when we argue, I mean, I'm, I'm just not there to have sex or anything, you know. I don't, I would rather have a conversation about our problems than to have sex. Let's have that conversation first and get it resolved, and then we can have sex. And how you feel about that, Mr. Buford? <laughs> well, you know, I... I'm a man, so I prefer, you know, that we do it on a regular basis. But, I mean, if she feels like she's not into it, it makes me not into it. You know, like, if I, you know, say we're not fighting, if we didn't have a fight in two, day, two or three days, you know, and I, I try to, you know, be intimate, and she's like, no, you know, don't really want to do it, then it's, it's put me in a position like, you know, well, forget it, you know? I don't want to do it, you know? It just... That's not the way that's going to work. Honestly, it's because four years we've been doing almost the same thing. I want something different, you know? There's no... There's hardly any foreplay. It's just, bam, come on, let's do this. Turn over, you know? I don't, I don't want that. I want to feel like he really wants me and not the sex. The last fight we got into, she told me she wanted a divorce three different times during this argument. And I said, whatever, fine, we get divorced. And she snapped out. You know, hit my thing, I'm in my car, broke some stuff in the vehicle. Why would you say that three times in an argument? If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. So something tells me that in all of the financial issues have lost the romance. Yes, yes Your Honor. The financial issues... It throws everything off, and, you know, then here come the arguments, and then we're both stubborn, so we'll sit in the room for six hours and not say a word to each other, and I don't like that. And then we lay down, and we go to bed, and we still don't say anything to each other. Do you all have any agreements in your family about don't go to bed angry or...? My mom and dad, they tell me that all the time, but uh, my husband is stubborn. I, it's like I can't get through to him. It's like... You know, I say you have to peel an onion back one layer at a time. That's him. When it comes to arguing, I don't really like to argue mm -hmm. because I don't like tension, you know what I'm saying? I don't like that feeling. And I try to be as calm as possible, and she doesn't like that. So it makes it harder for me to communicate when, you know, you're angry at me and hollering at me, and I've been that way for my whole life. I'm an Aquarius. I can't help it, but... So is my father, and that's exactly the way he is. Yes, <laughs> I'm I can, not we can't lie help you. it. We do not like confrontation, right. and if, if you bring it to me like that, I'm going to settle down. For instance, the last fight we got into, she told me she wanted a divorce three different times during this argument. And I said, whatever, fine, we get a divorce. And she snapped out. You know, hit my thing, I'm in my car, broke some stuff in the vehicle. Why would you say that? Three times in an argument. Because he don't listen to me. And he's so defensive. Like, I can have a start having a conversation with him and I'm calm, like, we're sitting here talking calm. And then it's like, I can say something, and he takes it totally the wrong way. I just feel like he doesn't care sometimes, like he said. So I think you all have to learn how to reconnect, one, and communicate. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we always say is you have to listen to each other, not talk at the same time. Y'all don't do that because you have two different fighting styles. Yes, ma'am. Okay? You are the in-your-face, and you want to continue to talk about it until you get a resolution. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get a resolution at this moment, the next time y'all talk, you're still going to be talking about exactly. it, okay? Exactly. You, you said what you said. I heard what you said. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Exactly. exactly. Okay? So the first thing you have to do is respect each other's style of conflict resolution. Your wife needs to get it out. And your husband, though needs once you get it out, leave it him alone. to acknowledge that he heard you and then you to leave it alone. That's going to be so tough for you. Yes, because I feel like he doesn't acknowledge it. Though. And that, But that's what you heard me say, that mm -hmm. one piece. He has yep. to acknowledge it, mm -hmm. okay? 
Once you get it, you have to give her the chance to get it out. And you then have to say, I heard what you said, baby. OK? I yes, heard you. The last argument that really got us here, I mean, it started off like she said, I don't buy her enough stuff or we don't do enough stuff, you right. know? She mentioned that today. And I feel the same way she does, but we don't have the money to do that. And she was like, oh, you can buy me a card or anything. I'm like, well, true, that's true. And it's my fault. I could easily grab a card or a flower. You know, but I'll be just getting off work or 12 hours. I'll be trying to get home to her. Now, you both live in Chicago. Yes, ma'am. I live in Chicago. Oh. <laughs> OK. They have online fun, free things to do in Chicago. Can you all make an agreement that on one day in the evening, y'all are going to do a date night? Ours is Tuesday. We all going to listen to some music. We like a blues bar. We're going to listen to some low-down blues, drink beer out of a bottle, that yes, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yes, Ask your mom and dad if they can Watch the baby for that one day because you're going to say, on Wednesday, we're going out. We're not making any other plans. We're going out. We're not spending a bunch of money. And then, since she's home during the day, have her come up with the idea. You know, I don't mind, you know, paying for anything. That's why I'm working so we can have whatever you want, you know? And if you really just want to go on a date, just plan it, you know, and let me know. Like, when you get off work, we're going to do this and this. And I'm going to be, I'm going to agree with it. You know, it's not going to be like, oh, no, I just got off work. I'm not, I ain't never told her no, that I don't even want to go out with her, never. It's not that. It's, what is it, Miss Buford? It's always the money with him. Well, I just came up with some yes. solutions. Uh-huh. Also, every time my family had to take a trip back in the day, we packed a lunch. Mm-hmm. OK? And I'm fine with that. I still, to this day, when I get on a plane, mm -hmm. I still be packing my lunch, OK? <laughs> That's just how I am. I'm, I guess I'm going to be southern to the bone forever. Right. Yes, yes, OK? Yes, so how about a picnic dinner that you can put together? Y'all got Tupperware, everything? Mm -hmm. Put something in there. If it's nothing but some chips and some homemade dip, mm -hmm. and go and sit and just go over your day. You know why? Because you love him. Yes, I do. And you, when you get home, take a shower, light some candles, and put on the music in your room and take a minute for your wife. Yes, ma'am. OK? Yes, ma'am. It can't be wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. She's still got to feel like she's sexy and, and the woman that you moved across the country for to the coldest place on earth. Yes, ma'am. You know what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. You love her, don't you? Yes, ma'am, definitely. With you all my heart. You love him? Yes, I do unconditionally. OK. Finances are going to be tough. It's always tough. And nobody is going to do it right the first time. So I'd like to offer you all some couples counseling that will help you put a financial plan together. Would you all accept that yes, from me? Yes, I would, I would like that. Yes. OK. And so that will allow you to put a budget together so that you can start to save for your future. Yes, ma'am. I really want to see this work for y'all. I know it's going to work. Y'all going to figure it out. You're going to be one of them old couples that sit around and fuss at each other. But I want you to learn to fuss fairly. Yes, ma'am. While you still are loving each other. Yes, ma'am. OK? Do some picnics. Pack some deviled eggs. I can do that. And remember why you fell in love. And remember how you got through the fire. Remember that that fire didn't burn anything down. It actually lit something up. Yes, ma'am. We have to learn how to communicate fairly yeah. or argue fairly, whatever yeah. it is. We definitely need to figure it out. Robert, I think they're going to make it. They just really need to learn how to talk to each other. Right. When you have couples who are that stressed out, that falls into place in not doing anything else. I mean, you're thinking about that. Mr. Buford was really concerned with making sure he takes care of his family. Right. And he sees right. that as his responsibility. Mm -hmm. Miss Buford has to put the effort in to keep in the spark in their relationship right now right. as he holds it down. Right, right. I think at the end of the day, with a little help, mm -hmm. they're going to be fine. Yeah, I think so, too. Good.